G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip we're going to be talking solids filtration in aquaponic systems because I'm having a few issues with dodgy water quality in our fish tank and I thought we'd use this system here as a bit of a case study. So just to bring you folks up to speed who are new to the channel, welcome by the way, hope you're enjoying the clips. Um, this system here is called a split flow system. Basically we have a pump down here in the sump tank, brings the water up, splits it there and split flow. Um, one lot of water goes out to the grow beds with the other line coming up here into the fish tank itself. Now that water entering the fish tank displaces water up through this solids lifting outlet and solids as well. That's why it's called a solids lifting outlet through this pipe work here and then down into a radial flow settler. Uh, water comes up through a pipe, is directed upwards inside a stilling well where the direction of water has changed yet again. The velocity of the water slows down and that allows the solids or most of the solids to precipitate out onto the bottom of the drum where I then draw them off and use them elsewhere in the garden to feed plants. Now these things are not perfect, you will always get some sort of solids coming through here. So what happens here is the water, along with a few small solids, then travel into a moving bed biofilm reactor. Uh, the reason I have this set up is because it's a split flow, I had ammonia um, rich waste coming through the radial flow settler, uh, dumping straight into the sump tank um, through a couple of rudimentary filters that weren't able to process the ammonia and then it was being picked up again and delivered back into the fish and I don't want ammonia and nitrite going back into the fish so that is why I've made this little moving bed biofilm reactor. Uh, basically it's a load of um, water treatment media in here and the bacteria set up shop on there and transform all the ammonia all the way through to plant available and fish friendly nitrate. Uh, the water and some of the small particles of solids I mentioned make it through the filter. Then we're coming down here into the sump tank uh, before I built this little dodgy filter and we're then being picked up by the pump again and then going back through into the fish tank and the last week or so the water in there has been really really murky. Um, so I definitely don't want murky water in with my fish. I want it to be nice and crystal clear just like it was in our old system. So I've decided to add in another piece of filtering equipment. Now to begin with it's just a makeshift one. What we have down here is a tank screen, a rainwater tank screen. On top of that I have some floor scrubbing pads which as you can see are very good at picking up some solids. Then on top of that a little bit of 200 micron um, stainless steel mesh that is picking up even more solids again. Um, that little clump there is from last night's and this morning's feed and that is just preventing the solids going back through into the fish tank again. Um, now even with that in there you may be able to make out on my little screen there or I could just show you the uh, footage. The water in there is still very cloudy and not how I like it in my fish tanks. In my old system I had two fish tanks, a radial flow settler, a moving bed bioreactor and then I had a third drum that was set up as a rudimentary swirl filter. Water came in, a bit of a swirl action, um, a lot of the solids fell out on the bottom and then the clean water went down into the sump tank and where it was pumped to both the grow beds and the fish tanks again and I never had any cloudy water issues in that system whatsoever. So I've decided I really need to take this serious and replace this dinky little filter with something a little bit better. Now what I've decided on is the old drum that I had some media in. This drum was actually set up as a rudimentary um, trickle filter in the system before I made this one here. It just wasn't good at converting the ammonia through to nitrate so that's why I replaced it with a bioreactor. Um, but what I've done in this one here this time around is I've put in a bag full of um, shade cloth offcuts and then these scrubbing pads on top and that's basically just going to sit right here and collect any of the fine solids that come out from the moving bed bioreactor. What I can then do is just take out these little floor scrubbers Hit them with the water blaster because it is a fairly high pressure, very low water usage and it cleans these guys up beautifully, gets all the solids out from the middle there. I'll do that pretty much well once a week and that'll save the majority of the um, solids from making it through down here. Now every couple of months I just plan on pulling out the shade cloth bag and um, hitting that with the water blaster and then just replacing it in here and that should be more than enough to um, trap all those fine solids 
to stop them going back into the fish tank here. So what I'll do is I'll um, turn a couple of valves and um, get this little rinky dink uh, filter out, install this one, and then 24 hours time, we will come back, take some more video of the fish tank and compare the results. So it's the next morning, folks, and I must say, yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of um, build up down there on that top pad. Oh, there's a couple of little bits of solids down there. Oh, there we go. A lot of it's made it through already down to that red one. And yeah, so what I'm thinking of doing actually is um, increasing the, the amount of shade cloth in there just to bring the um, scrubber pads up a little bit um, higher, mainly because when the sump tank's full, um, this is sort of uh, covered with water. So that's something I'll look at doing a little bit later. As for how the water in the tank is going, I must say I am pretty impressed. Just looking down from the top there, I can already see that it is a lot clearer. A lot of that cloudiness has left the water. Also helps as the morning sunlight's coming in. But just looking at the, um, the vision from here I, in the camera, I can tell it's better. And yeah, the way they're schooling around that camera, I definitely think they want a bit of a feed. So what I might do is a bit of a test. Um, we'll throw some feed in for them, um, give them a little bit of chow, and then we'll check out the water quality after, and then we'll come back in about three or four hours time, and we'll see what the water quality is like then. So it's been about three hours, folks. Before we have a look at the uh, fish water, um, I did end up putting a little bit more shade cloth into the um, drum there, just to raise it up a little bit, so that's all sorted nicely. As for the fish, uh, well, I can see them from the top. So the water isn't too cloudy at all. And we'll swap over to some underwater vision right now. I did have a bit of a test look before and it does look like there are still some large solid particulate in there. But you know, obviously they've had something to eat. They're gonna have to relieve themselves. But the, the cloudy issue that I was having the other day definitely has abated. So um, yeah, I'm more than happy with this little filter jobby here. And just to let you folks know, this is something that I'm particular about with my system. I don't like any ammonia going back in or any nitrite. That's why I have this moving bed biofilm reactor because it is a split flow and some of that water goes in there as I mentioned before. And I also don't like the fish to be um, swimming around a lot of crud. Now people will say, but hey, in the wild they swim in muddy rivers. Yeah, I don't really care about that. Uh, these are uh, fish under my care. So as far as I'm concerned, they deserve the best condition as, po as possible. And that means uh, next to zero um, solids floating around there and definitely no ammonia and nitrite in there, which is harmful to the fish in certain situations. If you are interested in a secondary little solids filter like this, I do have a clip on a canister filter. It's set up differently external to the sump tank. Uh, the link will pop up up there. Uh, the only reason I've got this one in here is because this is a walkway. Um, as your regulars will know, and I don't really want anything else in the walkway. A bit push, push for space here. Um, but there, you know, there are other ways to go. If I had a large enough vessel and space, I could set up another um, radial flow settler just at the end here. Uh, larger again, probably around about four to 500 litres. The larger the volume in the filter means a longer retention time. Longer retention time means a finer grade of particulate that will settle out of the water flow and you can yeah remove that and use it in your veggie patch or wherever else feed up a couple of fruit trees and whatnot but yeah for me here this is what i'm doing it's going to serve my purpose nicely i think and yeah eventually this system will be coming down as we um build the other two down the back there uh, as for this little jobby i definitely think it's going to do the job uh, but when we do um, set up the new systems down in the old aquaponic area, I'll be running two side-by-side -side systems. Uh, one's pretty much all similar to this, a solids filter, uh, moving bed biofilm reactor, and then a second solids filter before the water goes into the sump tank. And then the other one will be just a straight single loop system, meaning the water travels one loop, not two, like the split flow. It'll come out through the fish tank, into a um, solids capturing device. And then from there, the water will go directly into the grow beds, then into the sump where it's picked up again to go back into the fish tank, which finishes off the single loop. So I'm more than happy with how this little filter jobby has cleaned up the cloudiness issue in the water. Uh, the next thing I need to tackle are the larger solids, but I think that actually comes down to how the water is flowing through the tank. So we'll have a bit of a look at that in another clip.
So those build clips will be coming to the channel a little ways down the line, but I will be posting other helpful aquaponic clips and tutorials to the channel here. So if you want to catch them, you know what to do. Just hit that subscribe button, pound on the bell icon, and hopefully YouTube will send you notification once they're published. There will be a playlist popping up at the end here, and a link will be in the description below. For all you folks who are new to aquaponics, or you folks who are looking for some aquaponic content, um, different builds and explanations on how systems run, like the split flow and the single loop and whatnot, so suss out that playlist. And if you do find these clips uh, helpful at all, feel free to share them around with your family and friends. Before I go, I really do want to thank you all for coming along and sussing out the clips. Special thanks to our awesome supporters over on the Farm Your Own Yard supporters website we've created and also the YouTube membership platform. Thank you very much, folks. Please suss out our super contributors. Links, as always, in the description down below. I will pretty much all leave it there, folks. I hope you're all doing well and your gardens are booming and aquaponics and I will catch you next clip. Cheers folks, have a top one.